Hey everybody, this is Rafi Zerb, and I got a video for you on the switch component in Foundation. So we're gonna go over how to make a switch and some of the modifications that you can do with a switch. So if we take a look at the basic switch, uh, it's something like this. So you can toggle uh, the switch on and off and the markup is pretty simple uh, and it is using a checkbox to create this style. So now I'm going to show you some of the markup and how to modify this component. So if we hop over to our editor here and we're just going to copy and paste right from the docs, that's the easiest way to get going with the switch. I'm going to just go over some of the uh, classes that are used to style this component. So. We have this div with a class of switch, and that is what's creating the switch. Inside of that, there's two specific components. So one of them is the input type checkbox. So if we look over here, we got input type checkbox, and that is actually what is toggling the switch on and off. So you notice that the switch starts in the off position by default. Um, when you click it, then you know it's, it changes that state. Now the way to start the switch off in the on position is actually using the checkbox property checked. So checkbox checked means that the switch will start active. So you can use this attribute right on your uh, switch component um, right inside the input. And if you leave that off, then it'll start in the off position. So that's something that you can um, add manually when the page loads or you can even use uh, jQuery or JavaScript to, um, to add that uh, attribute on as needed. So other classes that are important. So the uh, switch input class that is on the input is what actually styles the switch, uh, the checkbox and it hides the checkbox visually. So we're masking the checkbox with this um, switch type of uh, style. And this switch type style is actually created by the label. So the label in here that is attached to this uh, checkbox is actually what's creating the style. So the switch paddle uh, itself is this piece and then the, um, the box around it is also being styled there uh, with an after uh, pseudo element. So the other important thing is the ID. So the ID on the checkbox is example switch and that needs to match the ID for the label. So in this case, we're just using example switch here, but you can change it to anything you want. Um, they just need to match this for attribute on the label. If they match, then it will actually toggle on and off. If they don't match, then that's what you wanna look at first. Um, as the issue why it's not toggling on and off. And then uh, lastly on this markup here, we have a span with a class of show for SR. So that means um, this particular content will show for a screen reader and it's going to um, tell them what this toggle actually does. So it's more context to the switch itself. So this is for somebody who's visually impaired using a screen reader, they land on the switch um, they can know what this switch does. So uh, it says download kittens, it could be um, switch dark mode on, you know, it could just be any, any type of function that this switch is doing, just be specific to what that's uh, actually doing. So that is the basics of the switch. Let's take a look at a radio switch. Okay, so the radio switch is actually using an input type radio instead of checkbox. So let's hop over to an example and take a look at how that works. So the difference here with a radio switch is that you'll have a group of switches uh, that are together and when you toggle one of them, they will uh, then untoggle the other ones. So basically, because it's a, a radio, only one of them could be on or uh, at the same time, on or active, let's say. So let's show you how that setup works. 
So again, we have a uh, switch, a div with a class of switch, so that's all the same. The difference now is that the input is type radio. Okay, and the way that these uh, different radio switches are tied together, see they're all uh, type radio, is this name of test group. So you see how there's a name here. So this name attribute is built into uh, forms specifically for radios. And again, uh, foundation is creating these nice switch styles, but it is underneath the hood, it is a radio. Um, so this name, if the name matches these other uh, uh, switch type radio, or sorry, input type radio, then it's going to be tied together. So that's how it, the browser knows that when you click on one of these, toggle the other two off. Now again, each one of these uh, switches will have its own unique ID. So this is example switch one, and the four attribute is also example switch one, and then the next one is incremented to example switch two. So just make sure that they have their unique IDs, but they are tied together with the, uh, with the name. So just to demonstrate how that works, if I changed the name of one of these, um, so let's just change that. Now it's only going to toggle the two that have the same name. The third one is now independent. So that's how that works. Uh, so this is how you use switches with radios as well. So switches also have sizing classes. So let's take a look at the sizing classes in Foundation. So we have tiny, small, and large. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these examples over and just show you the differences. So this is an example of a tiny, small, and then a large switch. And let's actually put the default size in there as well. So the sizing is controlled with one single class. So we can chain on multiple classes to this component. So we have div of the class of switch, and then now we have the class of tiny on there. So that's going to make a tiny switch. And then we have a switch with a class of small that's going to make a small switch. If you don't add any sizing classes onto it, then it will be the default size. Um, which you can call medium, but it's really just the default size. And then uh, over here we have our large uh, switch. So that is how you use the sizing classes to modify the switch. And another really cool thing you can do with the switches is actually put text inside of them. So we have a section here called inner labels. And if we grab that code, I'll show you how that works. So let's hop over here. We'll put in our new example. So we can create uh, this switch. Uh, right now it's a large switch and we have uh, some a question here. So you can put any, uh, any text around it that you want. You can use a side label, whatever you want. But the switch in itself is just a div with a class of switch. So the difference here is only that we've put um, a couple extra spans in here. So we still have our span with a show with a class of show for SR, and that's just going to describe uh, what this switch does. Uh, and then we also added some uh, spans in here. One is a class of switch active. And so switch active is when the switch is toggled on or active. Um, and that's where you can actually uh, put this piece of text in here. Uh, so you can change the text. Right now it's set to yes. And um, when the switch is inactive, it's set to no. And again, you can use the, uh, the checked attribute to change that default state. So as you can see here now, because I added the checked attribute, it's in its um, on state and now it's in its off state when I remove it or clicking on and off will do that. So what's happening here is that there is text that is laid into the switch um, 
and it is hidden for uh, screen readers by, by default. Um, so that is uh, something that is handy for a screen reader. Um, they can know if the switch is toggled on or off um, just based on the checkbox itself. So that takes care of um, you know reporting back what state the uh, checkbox is in. So yeah, any type of text works here. So we could do on or off, which is the other uh, common setup. Uh, so it fits just fine. Now, if you put really long text in here, um, it may overlap with the uh, switch paddle. So you might need to make the switch paddle a little bit smaller to make everything uh, fit inside of that. All right, and another thing I wanna show you is also how to style the switch a little bit. So the most common thing is uh, we want to make the switch uh, rounded. So we want a little bit of um, radius on there. So let's go ahead and open up our um, CSS. And we're actually going to use uh, SAS here just to do that real quick. So the thing that we want to target is the switch paddle. Again, that's the label. Then that's what you're seeing uh, over here. So we'll go ahead and target uh, switch paddle. All right, and then we'll write in a border radius. And if you're using the uh, Zurb stack, uh, it's already going to use auto prefixer, so it's going to take care of the vendor prefixes for you. Uh, so we'll go ahead and set up the border radius, and then we also want to uh, round this actual paddle, which is using an after uh, pseudo element. So let's take that into consideration. So we'll add the after. And we'll also do border radius 5,000 pixels. So that's a pretty standard for rounding an object. Um, if it was an image, it would be 50%, but in this case, it's a box. This works really well. So. Now we have our rounded uh, switch and paddle. So it's the switch paddle class out of the border radius and then also uh, the after pseudo element on the switch paddle uh, that will take care of the border radius for the paddle itself. And while we're on the subject of styling this component, we can uh, scroll down to the SAS reference there's a ton of variables here that you can use to style the switches much faster. So I showed you how to make it round in regular CSS, but this can be done much quicker and easily um, in the SAS version using the settings file. So there's some variables here, and there's also a mix in to create uh, this component without having to use foundations built in classes. I'm going to go ahead and just show you around the uh, settings file a little bit uh, for this component. So if we hop over to switch, so I'm just going to search for it here in the settings file. You can see all the alterations that you can make. So you could alter the default switch background, which was that gray color, um, the color it is when it's active, the height of the switch on you know default, tiny, small, and large. And then this is where you can also set the, uh, the radius. So the, right now the radius sets a global radius. So if we set a global radius of let's say three pixels, it's going to be that uh, border radius. Um, and again, I just showed you a way to custom set a radius on that anyways. So you can change a lot of stuff here. Uh, and this component is really flexible. Um, it's going to save you a lot of time instead of like coding this by hand. It's a lot of magic with hiding a checkbox. So uh, it's a really powerful component and I uh, hope you enjoy using it. We teach this component and every component in Foundation in our Intro to Foundation class. So make sure you check that out. I'll put the link below. And this is Rafi from the Foundation team. Thanks for watching.